The pyramids, one of if not mankind's greatest architectural achievements. These giant monuments are filled with mystery and have stood the test of time. When it comes to the pyramids, there's a lot to delve into. But today, we are going to dive deep into the Pharaoh's tomb, also known as the King's Chamber in the legendary Pyramid of Giza. The Pyramid of Giza was built for the Pharaoh Chufu in around 2560 BC. It was built as a tomb to honor the great Pharaoh. Upon entering the Pyramid of Chufu, you will enter what is called the Grand Gallery, which is an ascending passageway. The gallery is 8.6 meters tall and 46.68 meters long. At the top of the Grand Gallery, you will get into the legendary King Chamber. Here you will be met by a large sarcophagus for the Pharaoh. The King's Chamber is composed of three granite monoliths, which form the door to the King's Chamber. The room measures 1045 meters by 5.2 meters and is 5.8 meters high and shockingly it is made entirely of pink granite. It is built to resist an enormous amount of pressure from the masonry above. In order to support all the weight they had to make five chambers, which then at the top form a pent roof to distribute the weight of the masonry above. One crazy fact about the stone slabs of the roof is that each slab weighs around 80 tons. In the middle of the king's chamber is the sarcophagus, which in by itself weighs 3.8 tons. Currently the sarcophagus is hollow, but once it had a lid that would slide into place. Here the supposed Chufu would have had his resting place. The king's chamber were built as a reminder of the ancient Egyptian glorification of life after death. And in fact, the pyramids were built as monuments to house the tombs of the pharaohs. Death was seen as merely the beginning of a journey to the other world. How the chamber was built is still up to much debate. The fact that the king's chambers have beams that weigh as much as 80 tons and how they were transported there is a very hard question for archaeologists to answer. The common answer to how they moved the 80-ton blocks was that they may have built ramps which they hauled the blocks on and then dragged them to the king's chamber. But that still doesn't answer the fact it is 80 tons we are talking about. For them to have hauled these blocks, they would have to use techniques that we are not aware of or help from other sources. A popular theory about how the granite blocks were cut was by the pseudo-archaeologist Graham Hancock. He states that a lot of equipment and technologies have been lost throughout time. He claims that the Egyptians might have used advanced cutting methods to cut these large granite slabs. This is reasonable because during the time of the pyramids they had copper tools and blunt rock chisels, which would be impossible to cut these large monoliths. The copper tools would not have been durable enough or sharp carve out perfectly cut edges on the giant granite beams. A response to that is that they would have pounded wedges into the stone and then the stone would have cracked. This method is, however, completely impossible for two reasons. Firstly, they were not yet in the Iron Age, and even bronze could not possibly be used to cut out granite using wedges. Also, the process with wedges would also not be possible due to it not being precise, because in the King's Chamber, the blocks there are perfectly cut and have examples of precision cutting. So some detail in how they cut these blocks and then carved out them is missing and then the moving of 80-ton blocks. The idea that they used posts on the ground that they then pulled ropes against is questionable. You are not moving 80-ton blocks with 10,000 slaves, it won't work. The lines would break long before you could imagine getting enough people on it to pull it up a ramp with the inclination of 20 degrees, not a chance. Try pushing a 10-ton of truck up a 15-degree ramp with supposed ropes made out of grass. It is not reasonable. If they really built pulling systems, like 16 Thames Mechanical Advantage may be. But again, nothing in the records indicate that at all either. Nor was that tech handed down later as nothing of the sort was seen in later Egyptian works. So where did that knowledge go? Was the technology lost? Was it passed down by an ancient civilization that was lost to time? which also raises the question when this supposed technology would have been lost through time. Today, 5,000 years later, 
the burials of rulers do not look the same. It can be due to several things. Partly because they don't take honor as seriously, that they don't think it's worth the costs and trouble, or maybe even that today's engineers aren't competent enough to build similar objects. In fact, the objects are so monumental that it took a full 4,000 years before anything built was taller than the tallest pyramid from ancient Egypt. This really proves how far ahead of their time the ancient Egyptians were. It's safe to say that having a funeral as epic as the most powerful pharaohs had when they died is mighty. And probably no one in the world will ever get that either. Imagine being so powerful that the population slaved around the clock for decades to establish a tomb that would honor and preserve your legacy 5,000 years later. And the pyramids will likely remain for at least another 5,000 years.